and we're live again how you doing guys so it is sunday and you know what that means that means it is time for another live q a with the coach that is me um i do have some questions to answer so that's awesome so same same as usual you will probably be here for about a half an hour talking waiting if anybody has uh, anything they want to talk about we can we can discuss otherwise uh, i'm just gonna ramble and feel free to Feel free to toss out whatever. Hey, what's up, my man, John Bauer Fitness, who is uh, now uh, what retired for a bit. I know you've got a you got a big announcement coming up soon. I hope so. Uh, we're definitely excited for that. We'll stay tuned because uh, I I'm I'm personally interested in it. And uh, yeah, not to give too much away. So hope you hope, hope you're enjoying your time off, man. Uh, let's see what else. So big weekend. As you guys, some of you guys who are following me know I was. Um, out at, uh, I was out in New Jersey. Actually, I red-eyed out to New Jersey Friday night and uh, flew back last night for the first, I guess, real Viking Ninja Bodyweight Workshop. And uh, it was a lot of fun. So we'll definitely talk about what happened at the Viking Ninja Bodyweight Workshop this weekend. We'll talk a little bit about uh, the future of Viking Ninja, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk more about that Friday on the uh, Scream Ninja Ask Me Anything because we have a lot to talk about. Actually, uh, Sensei and Coach Darren and I are about to jump on a call here in a couple hours and hash out the next workshop. I think I might have mentioned that uh, last weekend or maybe Friday we talked about, we talked about having our body weight and uh, impact weapons joint seminar out in Boise. Uh, I think this summer is what we settled on. So really looking forward to that. Um, and especially after this weekend, this weekend was really exciting. And uh, any of you guys who are out there kind of know, kind of got to feel that energy, kind of got to see what's going to happen. So and like I said, I don't want to talk too much about Viking Ninja here unless people have specific questions and then we'll talk about it all day. In fact, actually I do have a question from my buddy, Jordan Harder, uh, Harder Training Systems about, this last weekend, so we'll talk. Like I said, we'll talk a little bit about that because it's a, it's a two-part question. So I'll answer some of it here and some of it Friday. Uh, what else is cool? Uh, not a whole lot. Oh, actually, yeah. Speaking of like, okay, uh, here I am. Like, I'm not going to talk about Viking Ninja training, but let's talk about Viking Ninja training some more. For any of you folks who have been to any of the Viking Ninja workshops, if you you are certificated, you know that is, you can send me a picture of your certificate. Certificate. I have a special let's say movement coaching deal for you guys um i'm not gonna give it away here but yeah if you're interested in getting a movement screen and some movement programming mobility programming send me a copy of your certificate and we'll talk um so like i said it includes full movement screen you know fms based movement assessment which you know i'll give which i'll just do for you guys and then if you want some programming i'll give you a very 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 discounted price on that. So yeah, uh, just something, something, something to do for the tribe. And like I said, if you just want to get a free screen, perfect, you know, send me, send me an email address and I'll send you my, my FMS screen guide. You can send me videos and I'll do a full FMS workup for you. And if you know somebody who's familiar with the FMS, who you, who can get you, get some programming for you. Perfect. Um, so cool. So let's, uh, let's get right to the questions actually. And, uh, this is the first one's fun. I actually have to I have to apologize and um, give props in the same statement. So this is this is my buddy Tony Jeffries. Uh, hopefully you guys you guys are familiar with the Box and Burn Academy. Uh, Tony Tony's the guy who started that, and uh, really just stand up guy. You know I've been to I've been to both levels of the Box and Burn Academy certification. I got to tell you uh, they're they're awesome. If you're looking for a good continuing education opportunity, get get to both of those. Um, there's definitely a lot of a lot of what they teach actually is kind of dovetails really nicely with what we do in Viking Ninja. Um, just, you know, the whole idea of martial arts training, martial arts movement practice based stuff for fitness or for or just, you know, martial arts as a movement practice. You know, I mean, something that they say a lot when, when you're training, uh, when you're learning box and burn is that, you know, some of the stuff you learn is not necessarily combat sports it's not it's not it's not ring ready training but it's still it's still good exercise you get good cognitive development and for your clients it's going to be fun i mean you know they get to feel like badasses you know? i mean you can put some combos together you know, and they'll show you this you know how to put together like good intelligent boxing combos that give you good work give you good neural development and also you know like I said, are just fun and everybody wants to have fun when they're training right i mean i know i do that's the only reason i train i mean i started training got into fitness because of you know other activities because of martial arts and swimming. I was like, wow, I want to be better at this. So I guess I have to get in shape. So a little aside there. But anyway, I bring this up because uh, the whole reason that I started doing this was because of, was of Tony. One of the sections of the level two box and burn certification is he does a whole rundown on how he, how he does social media programming and things that you can do that are very low overhead, like, you know, like vlogs and podcasts or blog posts. 
that increase your exposure and you know kind of give people a really good idea of what you're into. And like I said, it doesn't really cost you anything. I mean, if you have a phone already, if you have a laptop, if you have access to a computer, you can do all of this stuff. Actually, I see my buddy Ronnie's on. We were just talking about that yesterday. You know how uh, you know he's a he's a great martial arts instructor and he's actually going to open up his own school in Boise here in the Boise area coming up pretty soon. And we're talking about how to how to get reached. And I I, I see some of you folks uh, that are on the uh, on the view. I know Giselle uh, out of Mixfit. I know if you're still around, I know you've got really really good social media presence. But you know he was one of the things he said was start a podcast. You know it it doesn't matter if you get viewers. It doesn't matter if you get listeners. You know, really what it boils down to is at some point somebody's going to come looking for you. You know, they're going to Google you for your services. They're going to want to see what you're all about. And the more stuff that you have like this out there that you're talking about, you know, things that, that just kind of let people see how you do what you do, you know, that, that's good marketing for you. So, and, uh, you know, for, for a couple of years now, I've been saying, oh, yeah, man, I'm going to do it. Thank you so much for all the information. In fact, I think every time I see him, like I just saw him in September in Seattle, he was up here for, uh, uh, for Luca Hosevar's, uh, event, the Vigor Fit and Fitness Business Summit, which I also recommend. We'll talk about that at some point, which coincidentally is where I met Jordan, who actually asked me a great question about Viking Ninja training. So yeah, all this stuff is, is yeah, all this stuff is very awesomely connected. But anyway, I'm, I'm uh, getting off track. So anyway, like Tony, so, so I've been telling Tony for a while that I was going to start a podcast or a vlogs or something, and I haven't done it yet, but I just started a little while ago when uh, my other mentor, Sarah, said, hey, why don't we do this as part of your coaching? Do this live Q&A every Sunday with the coach. And I was like, okay, great. And the first episode was kind of, I didn't really know what to talk about. I just kind of threw some stuff out there. But then for this episode, I thought, well, why don't I just, why don't I combine that, those podcast ideas and start answering those questions? So here you go, Tony. I'm finally going to answer your question. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you for all your support and uh, good luck. I know you've got a ton of seminars coming up and I will definitely see you in Seattle when you're here in April. So Tony's question to me was, you know, you've been training for a long time. You've been to a lot of continuing ed. You've touched a lot of different training systems. What was the hardest movement for you to pick up? And th that's an interesting question for me because, you know, being a martial artist, there there's a lot of stuff you do. I mean, I've, I've trained martial arts since I was four. I've trained, gotten more styles than I even know anymore. And I've trained some really esoteric styles. Like, actually, I think my, one of my favorite styles is capoeira, which if you guys are familiar with that, it's kind of the, the, the Brazilian breakdance fighting, as they call it. And I mean, there's some crazy moves in that. You know, there's like, you know, acrobatics, there's handstands, there's handstand-based movements, um, you know, ground movement, all kinds of stuff. And so it, it'd be really easy for me to say, oh, some crazy capoeira movement, because there, there are actually movements that, you know, were really hard for me to pick up in that, just because of my body type and because of my limited range of motion um things like um like like back handsprings i mean at one point believe it or not i could do back handsprings and that that took me a while to learn and i fell on my head several times and i probably have have scaling issues now because of that like i mean all this right here has been super tight and of course doing jujitsu and powerlifting doesn't help but um so anyway my point is it'd be really easy for me to say it was some some crazy acrobatic move but really it's as i got into training under things like the Onnit Academy, for example, or Animal Flow especially, it, it actually wasn't the complicated movements that were the hardest for me to pick up. It was the simple movements. Um, so it was things like like an Animal Flow, if, you, if you've seen the forward eight movement, where it's kind of like, you know, you sort of, you, you know, you put your hands down and kind of kick up into this sort of half quarter handstand type thing, or uh, even something as simple as like a, like a table move or a crab reach, because there's so much going on there. And because it's, they're, largely static positions you know you have to you have to make sure that you can get all you know that you have the tissue conditioning the tissue motility to get in a position for those and me i just don't have that right now you know i mean i've been working a lot on my mobility and my tissue quality and my joint health the last couple of months last couple of years actually i mean like, god now that i think about it i mean i took i took on an academy durability almost three years ago for the first time and that's really where i started getting into all that stuff and so and, that, and like I said, that's, that's why I was like, that's the stuff that's hardest for me is anything that requires me to get into kind of, kind of a more static position. Cause I mean, I'm a pretty strong guy and I'm actually fairly explosive. So I can, so fast stuff and like, I mean, even jujitsu, right? Like I, mean, I can move around on the ground and, and scramble and go through transitions really quickly, but trying to get into something like a triangle, for instance, is, is just hell for me. I mean, you know, we're funny, we were working triangles uh, last week in class and, I mean, on the one hand, it, it, it's nice because I have such giant legs that I can, you know, I don't have to sink my triangle very deep. But on the other hand, just, just getting into the position is just like, 
And like I said, it's, it's not a lack of flexibility. It's not a lack of, of mobility. It's just kind of a little bit of everything. It's, it's, you know, mobility, it's flexibility, it's tissue motility. It's the fact that I just have giant short legs, you know, very wide, short legs. So yeah, it's, it, so it's things like that, you know, this, and, and the, the sad part is a lot of those positions, if we think about it, you know, if we have healthy tissues and joints and mobility should actually not be hard for us. You know, like, for example, um, you know, I was talking to to my mentor, Sarah Friday, and we, we were kind of discussing my GDC presentation that's coming up about uh, joint tissue health for game developers. And one of the things she says, you know, if you think about it, really, you know, from a seated position, you know, if you're sitting in a chair, you should be able to pick up and put your your ankle on your on your uh, your opposite thigh. And, you know, most of us probably can't do that. So I, I would wager that most of us would say that, you know, it's getting into positions like that. That's what um, that, that are the hardest things for us to learn. And there's no shame in that. I mean, no, our, our lifestyle just dictates that we're not going to be you know we're not we're not very mobile i mean even if we have a standing desk you know we're still not we still don't move around i mean you know standing is obviously better than than sitting but you have to move so if you're not moving you know if you're not if you're not you know or, or what's the joke now or, or i guess the the statement that we say is you know we look at babies and say wow they have perfect squats or they move or they you know they have perfect rolling patterns but you know as we grow older we stop doing that stuff and of course our brain just prunes all that out and we lose it so yeah, uh, kind of a long answer as I'm given to do, and yeah. But uh, anyway, thanks for the great thanks for the great question, Tony. Like I said, I'll see you in uh, see you in, in April for sure, maybe sooner. And next time, I don't know, I'll be down in LA sometime soon, so I'll have to stop in and, and say hey. Uh, let's see. So the next question is like I said from my buddy Jordan, and we're gonna talk. You know, I said we're not gonna talk about Viking Ninja too much. As I'm as, Jesus, I'm sitting here in my Viking Ninja shirt. Uh, this is awful. Uh, I'm kidding. Um, so his question was, what was your biggest takeaway from the Viking Ninja workshop this weekend? And <clears throat> so uh, I mentioned him on Instagram. That's actually a two part question. So and there was a multi part question. I'm not sure how many parts I want to talk about. But so there's so I can answer that as as a coach. Um, I can answer that as a participant. And I'll pr just to be indulgent, I'll probably answer it as a, as a martial arts practitioner. But like I said, the, those last two I'm going to I'm going to save for uh, Friday's uh, Screaming Ninja Q&A. So if you really, really care about the answer to the, those two answers, you know, join me on Friday and we'll talk about that. But the first the first question is, as a coach, what I took away from it is um, so I took a bunch of things away from it. Oh, what's up, Andres? Andres and Ronnie again. Uh, so this, is, this is like this is like the, the, the tribal alums hangout. That's awesome. Um, tribal tribal. You guys for, for you guys who don't know tribal MMA is a, is a Kaju Kimbo and MMA school that a couple of us used to train at. And um, yeah, good to see you guys. But uh, so as I was saying, Viking Ninja as a coach, well, it, it's really interesting because I've been, like, like I said, I mean, I've, I've been through a lot of continuing education in the last three years, and I see a lot of people come to different kinds of workshops for different reasons. And one of my big takeaways was that I, th I think people are not just looking for something different. They're looking for something that that's resonant, something that resonates with them on a level more than physical. Um, you know, one of my one of my coaches and mentors, uh, Coach John Wolf at the On Academy, he, he likes to say that training, coaching, training, personal training is a very ex is, is, is very experiential. You know, it's not just it's not just the movements you're doing and how you feel. It's like, it's how do you feel overall? You know, when you're training, how do you feel as a person? How do you, what, what's the emotion? Is there emotional resonance? And I think people are looking at that. I mean, there's so many options for training programs nowadays. And I think people want more than that. I think people, and, and, you know, reality is whether it's CrossFit, whether it's Orange Theory, whether it's, you know, on an academy type training, whether it's, you know, FHT, whether it's 531, whatever, weightlifting, body weight, there's a lot of intelligent programs out there that are going to get you in decent shape. But so I think, I think we're moving into an area where people want to, like I said, people want to connect. People want to be part of a tribe. People want community. And that's, <clears throat> that's what they're looking for. And, and seeing not just how many people came to the workshops this weekend, but how, how clued in they were the whole time. I mean, it was like, you know, I mean, huge props to, to coaches Zane and coach Blake. Like they, they are just um, like watching those guys coach this weekend just blew my mind. I mean, I knew they were good coaches just from watching them on, on Instagram and, and seeing them teach, but to see them go through the Viking Ninja curriculum and just the way they owned it was amazing. And more than, and I could tell because everybody in the room, all 24, 25 people were cued in on them the whole time. Like I don't think I saw a single instance where, 
where people were, were checked out or just kind of like, hey, okay, well, yeah, I'm just going to wait till we get back to the exercises, whatever. And that to me says that those people were all there because there was something about Viking Ninja Train that, that resonates with them on a very, very deep level. So as a coach, that kind of makes me, the, the takeaway there for me is, what is it? it's actually a question. It makes me look at my own programming and say, well, what is it, that is it? How can I offer that to people? You know, how can I, how can I give people that, that, that little spark, that thing that resonates with them, that thing that just makes them go, Hmm, I, that's something I want to be part of. And more than that, once I have that, how do I keep them there? Like I said, how do, how do you keep people that engaged, uh, especially in something like where it's a new system that you know requires buy-in, requires a bit of a bit of a, a time commitment, a financial commitment. I mean, you know, people traveled from all over the East Coast and all over the country to come to these workshops, and you know, paid what I think they're three hundred bucks each for the workshop. You know, three hundred bucks for five hours of training. I mean, that's that's not horrible, but I mean, it's not cheap. And so, you know, a system that you don't really know anything about, I mean, the only thing you know is, you know, it started by Isak and he's a great guy and you kind of know his work. You kind of know some of the other folks who are involved, you know, you know their work, but still to, you know, to, to, to decide that you're going to be all in on that, on something like that, that you only know those things about, that's, you know, like I said, there's something there. So that's my big takeaway as a coach is, is trying to find out like what that experience, what, what those little experience points that resonate with people are. And, you know, it wasn't just us. I mean, I, you know, I was watching the live stream from the performance ranch event too. And it's the same thing. You know, they had probably 25 people there the whole time. Oh, what's up Ian? Um, buddy Ian, the fighter nerd. Hey, hey you got a fight coming up, don't you? Uh, yeah. What's up with that, man? And, uh, but anyway, yeah. So <clears throat> that's something I'm going to have to think about. And, it's funny when I first started like my writing my coaching stuff. One of the things that I didn't really do was write a brand statement or brand communications. You know, I mean, I did the thing I think we all do, where it's like, you know, it's like oh, I gotta get my website up and I gotta design my, uh, gotta design my logo and my t-shirts and all that. And 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 the more and the more I got in, the more I was. But I don't really know who my customers are. I don't know. And not knowing my customers meant I didn't really know what I was doing. Uh, so, so I took a little break, you know, went back to that kind of definition, you know, like I said, figuring out like, what is my business statement? What's my vision statement? You know, all the, all the things that, you know, people say, oh, you'll just figure those out. It's like, well, you know, I think there's nothing now that I've done it. I don't think there's anything wrong with, with taking that approach to developing a business, because for me, it's going to help me answer that question of how do I figure out those experience points for people? Looking at March. March, nice man. Keep us posted. Um, I would definitely like to go to that and like to see you uh, lay the smack down on some fools. Uh, yeah, and let let us know, man. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll shout it out for sure. <clears throat> but um, yeah, that's how I'm going to answer that question. And then, like I said, um, as a as a participant, um, there's definitely some stuff I can I can talk about. And definitely as as a martial artist, like that's that's the really fun part. Uh, some more more joins. Oh, what's up, Jamie? We missed you this weekend. Hopefully, hopefully we'll see you soon though. Azure Therapeutic Massage. Hello to you as well. Thank you for popping in. Uh, again, you guys, are, you know, this is an open discussion. So if you have questions, um, I think those are my two questions for today. So I'm going to just start rambling again uh, about uh, stuff. Um, hmm. What do I want to start rambling about? I mean, like I said, I don't want – well, let, let, let's, talk, let's talk about this weekend a little bit since um, I know people have asked about it. Um, so what we did this weekend was we had, like I said, we had, um, we had, we had two Viking Ninja workshops and I actually want to talk more about coaching. I actually want to talk about watching, you know, watching, um, Blake and Zane coach, because I think, you know, for me, that's, that's one of the things that I'm always worried about when I'm in front of people is, you know, can I, can I present the thing that I'm supposed to be presenting? You know, can I keep people engaged? I mean, I've been, you know, you guys know my background is actually software engineering right now. You know, I work at Facebook right now. I've worked at all the other big companies, Microsoft, Google, Intel, you know, yada, yada, yada. And for, and a big part of my job when I was at those companies was to be a technical presenter. So public speaking and, and coaching are very similar. Um, so, so to watch people who are really, really good at both of those is to me, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's performance art. You know, when you, when you see people who can just get in front of people and just, just own the room, grab their attention. I mean, I remember like when I first went to, um, I did my first audit Academy seminar, uh, this would have been March of March of 2015. So almost three years ago. 
um, you know, just watching the way John, you know, Coach Wolf, you know, John just walked in and owned the room like for two days, you know, and every, and I mean, he, the whole time he was funny, he was on point, he was, he was engaging, like he would engage people individually, he would engage the whole room. And so I think that was, that was something that really stuck with me because I, I, you know, I mean, I don't mean to stereotype, but it was just kind of one of those, I, I kind of thought coaching was just, you know, you sort of just like, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Jamie. Like, John, John's our boy, man. Like, yeah, you, you guys who haven't had a chance to get out to the United Academy or train with John Wolf, like, man, you, you're missing out. I mean, the dude doesn't train people much anymore. I mean, I think he's he's gotten kind of swept up by uh, by his administrative work. But I know I know he goes out and does uh, he does the foundations every so often. But, uh, yeah, man, I don't know if he's watching this. Yeah, probably not. He probably doesn't watch these. But, uh Love you, John. Um, hope life's good. But yeah, like I was saying, I think, um, you know, I used to think the coaching was just, just just stand in front of people and yell shit at them, right? And, and uh, same with public speaking. I, I used to think like public speaking was, yeah, just get up in front of people, read your notes, you know, drop in, sprinkle some color in. But, you know, understanding that you have to tell a story. You have to, you know, pe- people are people are there to be, what was it, Luke, Lucas said at, at, at VFBS, at the Vigor, the Vigor Summit that I mentioned, he gave a presentation and he said something that was really cool. He said, you know, your clients or your customers are the heroes of your story. And when you're presenting, you have to make sure that they know that. So that's a really interesting approach. And was Jamie said, he was so real. And he was, I know, I know we're yeah, let's turn this into like, like a John Wolf love fest for a couple of minutes. Cause, cause he's such a great guy. I remember like, and, and that's the cool thing. That's, you know, that's, I don't know how much you've dealt with, with John, Jamie, but I know like every time I go out to the Academy, you know, he'll always pop in and just say, hi, shake my hand, say, what's up, say, how you doing? And I mean, I think like, I mean, he, he's a great model to aspire to as, as a coach. I mean, cause he, I mean, he even knows everybody's name. Like, and I'll see people come into the Academy that, you know, that I did courses with like years ago. He's like, Hey, what's up? So-and-so like, it's, it's been a while since I've seen you. And so yeah, good guy. But you know, and that's something he does really well. He makes you feel like you are the hero of his story. Like when you talk to him, he, you know, he makes you feel like you're the only person that matters right now. And I think <clears throat> that was something that I saw um, Zane and Blake do really well this weekend was they made all those folks who, like I said, had already, given time money blood sweat spirit tears to you know to be there and you know they made them all feel like they were the heroes of that viking ninja story and to the point where we had people who were already signing up for the next couple of workshops like you know on the ground there and so where am i going with this coaching coaching personal personal uh, public presentation um, okay. Yeah. I was just talking about like the, how I think Zane and Blake are awesome, but, and when, why I think coaching is also is, is a, is a public skill. And, and I think most of you guys know this, like you guys who are coaches know this better. Hey, what's up, Leo, my man, Leo Savage. I know he's got a, he's got more workshops than, than anybody coming up in a couple months. I think, uh, what I think, I think, I think Jamie, you're actually going to go train with Leo in a couple of weeks. Is that, is that correct? And um, let me tell you guys, I'm super jealous. I would love to be at, uh, at uh, the 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 savage flow what are you guys calling that savage flow primal flow what are you guys calling that leo the you and you and savage and, Fr- and francesca are doing um but yeah was, uh, i think uh, that's the what the 17th 17th of february so if you guys are on the east coast again go check that out um yeah jamie's going to that and like i said i'm super jealous if i weren't going to another workshop i would i would totally be there with you guys but um yeah, because uh, what kettlebell flow primal savage workshop? There you go. Thanks, brother. <clears throat> so yeah, East Coasters get to that man because it's uh it's definitely a one of a kind. You know, some some kettlebell flow, some some steel mace flow, and some body weight flow, and in, in you know taught by by some pretty good again back to awesome coaches. You know, I mean, I took like I said, I took Leo's workshop uh, at the Onnit Academy, and dude can coach. I mean, you know, props to you, brother. You can you can coach it up. You know, your system was awesome. I love the way you presented everything. And, you know, again, I was in those workshops where a lot of people had, you know, who were either new to steel mace or beginners to steel mace kind of showed up and were cued in the whole time to what Leo was teaching. And it's it's because the guy can tell the story. I mean, I think, you know, just by, you know, with Leo specifically, the way he the way he moves a mace, his mace flow, if you guys have seen his stuff on Instagram, I mean, you, you feel heroic when when you're flowing with a mace like that. I mean, I mean, honestly, no, thank you, dude. I mean, honestly, like when I was doing some of those moves, you're trying, I felt like a badass. I was like, Jesus, this is this is like some warrior shit, you know. So 
and and again you guys that's just back to that whole idea that training is experiential you know you, you gotta I mean, it was something we hear a lot I, that gets, I think it was, it's attributed to Maya Angelou is, you know, the short is, you know, people, people won't remember what you did, what you say, but they'll remember how you made them feel. And I think that's, that's something that good coaches do. Like I said, they make you feel, they, they make you feel like, like I said, feel heroic. They make you feel like you matter. They make you feel important. And, you know, back to, like I said, I started this by talking about our Viking Ninja bodyweight coaches, uh, Zane and Blake, but. I really feel like they did they did a great job of that. And it's kind of interesting because it's a it's a really good bar, I think, for the rest of us. Um, you know, like I said, you know, Coach Zaren and I have our workshop coming up in a couple months, probably summer is what we're is what we're shooting for. And it's it's nice to have that high bar, but it's also really intimidating. Even like I said, even for somebody like me who's been training and teaching martial arts for years, but to teach a a completely new curriculum that, you know, largely was designed by us and is kind of kind of fits into a larger system you know it's it's interesting because like i said you got to get buy-in you got to get people interested you gotta i don't know you gotta get people to to connect and hopefully hopefully i can do that you know like it's uh yeah it's it's, it's intimidating but i'm really excited about it i mean I, I you know i came back from uh saturday just buzzing like i mean even though like you know i'd been i'd been up since probably the morning before because i can't sleep on planes very well so um yeah I, I don't know, you guys. I'm, I'm getting a little, little, little choked up thinking about it. So, um, yeah. So we got about four more minutes. I'm going to get back to work. But if anybody else has questions, Ronnie, what is your seminar going to be? So it's going to be body weight and impact weapons. So we'll get uh, Coach Zane and maybe Coach Blake. Hopefully, both of them out there. And I'll be doing the Viking Ninja Screamer curriculum, at least the first part of it, probably double sticks and partner drills. And then Coach Zaren will be doing uh, some of the Viking Ninja bow staff stuff. And that'll also serve as a as a prep course. So if you if you take that course, then you'll have your and you test out properly, you'll have your body weight prep certificate. And you'll also have some of your martial arts prep certificates. So you can, so then you can go into the white belt test. This was something Leo was asking about last time, like what the belt system is. We actually talked about that a little bit this weekend. Um, and what we decided specifically for you, Leo, cause I think you'll be interested about this is if you've been through a prep course, which I'm, which I know you have, you've been, you went through the prep in at Bella strength, right? So you're now actually eligible to test. So your prep certificate enables you to test for white belt. So you don't, so I don't know that, if, you're, if we're going to actually have a white belt course or it's just going to be practice, 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 and then some date we'll have, we'll actually have a, uh, we'll have a workshop that's just to kind of run everybody through it and then just do the test. So, but yeah, the body weight test is pretty intense, man. I mean, uh, I, you know, I was, I was, I mean, the, just the, the prep test is pretty intense. So the, I, I, you know, I remember, uh, when we were doing <laughs> when we were doing the beta test for this in in, uh, in in Chicago. This was the most insane. They actually the one we did in, in Austin was crazy too. But so in Chicago we had to do we had to do the the Viking 500, which some of you guys have heard about, which is the steel, which is the 500 reps of steel mace exercises in 25 minutes. And then we had to do uh, Fast Eddie, Fast Eddie Fitness just joined. Yeah, he knows he was there. You were you you were with us. And then we had to do I think we had to do a 25 minute body weight circuit too. And we had to, and so we had to do both of those like in in the same weekend and and you know Viking Ninja Protocol you know you can only rest three times the whole thing and it's an active rest you know so you have to so for body weight for example you can only either rest in a yeah brutal right yeah you remember that Eddie yeah you you, you still uh, you probably you probably like if you're like me you still wake up like like sweating about it right but uh but like I was saying like so so if you were resting you had to rest in a squat position for example or if you if it was the, the Viking 500 you couldn't put the mace down during your rest can I jump into your seminar even if not going to get into Viking Ninja you can um so the prep seminars are open to everybody um and then you, you just need to pass if yeah the only reason you need to you need to be uh, to pass is if you want to get into the belting system but if you want to just come to like one of the prep seminars yeah you, you can absolutely come to that um, so yeah, they're open, open to, open to the public, no experience needed. And yeah, and then you can just, you know, not, not test out. So yeah, no, no harm, no foul. Um, yeah, man. So that's, that's all I got. Um, got time, time for one more question. If anybody's, if, any, if anybody's, uh, got a, got something they gotta know. Do anybody, 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 um, <clears throat> Uh, let's see what else. Oh, I have to just answer that question. Um, 
Yeah. All right. Well, it's been fun. Thank you guys for watching. Like I said, some of your questions. We'll do this again next Sunday. Or if you have Viking Ninja questions, send me those. I'll answer them on Friday. And I will see you guys. Cheers.